one of these things is doing its own thing here. Uh, it's really a huge honor to share the stage with a number of people who are, are uh, heroes of mine and legends, and, and Kathleen, who I would posit is, is the Lady Gaga of uh, political fact-checking and political accountability. Um, <laughs> That was unscripted, that was unscripted. Uh, so my name is Jason Rozepka, I head up public affairs at MTV. Uh, I have the distinguished privilege of using MTV superpowers for good, that's my, my job, my job description. Um, this year the big thing that we're focused on is figuring out how we can reclaim our legacy of empowering young people in the political process and getting them registered to vote, getting them informed and, and turning them out. Uh, and when you think of MTV and politics, you probably think of this, uh, which in 1992 was, was pretty novel, the idea of a presidential candidate sitting down in front of 200 young people and hearing their concerns and, ask, uh, and answering their questions. Uh, and just a, just a fact check, one thing here, a trivia piece for you guys. He didn't uh, get the boxers or brief question when he was a candidate, it was when he was president already, so if you have that in a trivia night, you can get some points. Also, the campaign was never rock the boat, it was always choose or lose. Uh, so. This was really disruptive when we did it a long time ago, and we're going to continue to do this, but this is now playing stakes, and we needed to think about new ways to go beyond this to really engage young people and, and bring you into the process. And one of the things we're going to experiment with uh, this year, and really the signature piece of our 2012 election efforts, is a game called Fantasy Election, which is going to mimic a lot of uh, what people love about fantasy sports. So over 35 million Americans play some kind of fantasy sports um, and apply that to the political realm. And it's not gonna be a conventional game that is, is just measuring the conventional achievements. It's really gonna hopefully be an accountability tool and, and a way to gamify youth participation in, uh, uh, in, in our uh, electoral process. So just a quick context on where we're at. Um, we didn't come up with this in a vacuum. This game was informed by the reality that we see with this election cycle as it relates to young people. And we've been studying this for about the, the last 18 months at this point, just where are young people going into this election. Um, there are some temporal issues. If you look at 2008 versus 2012, which are very different races. Uh, and there are also some deeper, uh, big challenges and, and things that we see from young people starting to question the validity of electoral politics in this system that we've set up. We've got 65% of 18 to 29 year olds uh, now don't believe that, that our two party system works, um, that it, it's not really built for their generation. Uh, this is not apathy, this is actually pragmatism. We see that millennials are extremely pragmatic and if you think about our democracy, you think about electoral politics as a stock, I think they're asking hard questions about the performance of this stock and, and do they wanna buy more shares of it. Um, so that's a real challenge. For, for us in, in thinking about how do we make sure that young, people, uh, young people's voices are heard and that they are power players in the system. Um, you've heard a lot about the enthusiasm gap this cycle. It's right there. It's the difference between the bottom uh, light purple line and, and the upper dark purple line. That's youth voter primary turnout this cycle for every state where we have uh, exit polling data to be able to match them up. The average drop is about 12%. In New Hampshire, it's 30 points. Um, this is not apples to apples because obviously 2008 was very different. Uh, competitive primaries on both sides, the historic candidacy of uh, both Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton. Um, so it's apples to oranges, but it doesn't matter because I'm, I'm here to submit that our audience right now is not digging these oranges and, and we need to be cognizant of that if we're gonna bring people in. If we talk about gaming uh, the system, gaming the political system, there have been a number of, of efforts. We've seen some experimentation, everything from a fantasy Congress game that some college students launched where you earn points for uh, bills coming out of committee, um, to uh, a really valiant effort from, from uh, American Public Media with Budget Hero where you had the unenviable task of trying to balance the federal budget. Uh, so, so we've seen some efforts with gamification. We think it's, it's really a nascent field. Uh, we think it's ripe for experimentation. We really feel like this is an idea whose, whose time has come. And so we really want to play a role in, in pioneering that and moving it forward. So what I'm calling on all of you guys to do and what I'm, we're going to call on our audience to do is to have a fantasy election. And, and we really believe that this is within our grasp as, as citizens. And, and that's the way the game is built. And, and let's think about fantasy election as double entendre. So if we were to have a, a fantasy election, what would that look like? Um, I think we would want candidates who were transparent. We would want candidates who are honest. There's a novel concept. 
uh, we would want candidates who are engaging those constituents that they're setting out to have the privilege of representing. Um, and then on the flip side, we would want to use this game to penalize the behavior we don't want to see, which includes misrepresentation, lying, um, and then you know, incivility. The incivility that prevents us from getting anything done is driving this gridlock, but also the incivility that is pushing people out of the process, pushing citizens away from our politics because it's become so repellent. Uh, so what is that, how are we going to do that with a game? Um, what this is, is a new kind of, of political accountability dashboard, where we're going to take the great outstanding data that's pulsing out of all these great nonprofit, nonpartisan organizations like the Center for Responsive Politics, Project Vote Smart, PolitiFact, and others, and we're going to bring that to life in a game context. And the idea is you're going to draft a, a team of candidates who are running for the presidency or Congress, and you're going to earn and lose points based on how they behave in the real world. Not perform, but behave. Uh, and that's where these data feeds come into play. So we're not measuring how much money you raised last quarter or last month. We're measuring how transparent were you in your fundraising. And that's how you're going to earn and lose points as a candidate. Um, we're measuring not where you stand on the issues, but are you even making where you stand on the issues known? Are you even making that clear? Um, PolitiFact is our partner using the truth meter linking up to candidates. So if you get a, a pants on fire rating, you just lost 400 points in the game, and the people who own you are going to get a push notification that says, your candidate just told a bald-faced lie. You lost 400 points. And what we're trying to do is set this up as a, as a metaphor to say, let's, let's add and drop politicians, just like in the real world. There's 45 million millennials that are eligible to vote this cycle. That makes them one of the largest voting blocks in the country, and we want to really hold a mirror up to their power and do this in a virtual context in the run-up to November 6th, and then do it for real on November 6th. Uh, and then just today we, we announced two new partners in CQ Roll Call and PBS NewsHour who are going to give us information on town halls. So are these candidates doing town halls, teletown halls, press avails? Those are all going to be points in the game. So it's, it's very much a values-oriented uh, approach. Flip side is, we think about, uh, you know, again, fantasy election, what would that look like? We want young people who are informed, who are engaged, and who are participating. And so we want to give them bonus points for registering to vote, for checking into uh, either real-world political events or, or ones on television, um, and we want for you know, reading and sharing campaign news with their friends. These are all going to be bonus points, and that's what, what this piece looks like. So we've got data partners or, or partners like Rock the Vote and Foursquare and Get Glue, um, where those real-world actions are going to be checked into the game and help you propel and move ahead. Um, and you know, us being MTV, we're going to have some fun too. So. We've uh, launched this, this series recently called Rapper Republican, and you are given statements like uh, this one says, I'm going down as a legend whether or not you like me, and you have to guess if that uh, came from Kanye West or Newt Gingrich. Uh, <laughs> things are a lot harder than, than you might expect. <laughs> so, so that's going to be the daily sugar fix, because ultimately if this game isn't fun, nobody's going to play it, and, and we, re we realize that, and, and that'll be a, a piece of it. So there's a way to test your political knowledge. So we know this thing is not perfect. We actually want to invite all of you to help us make it better. So if you want to be a part of this, if you want to play this, uh, if you want to be involved early, uh, you can go to fantasyelection.mtv.com and submit your email, and we'll get you an invite before this launches, and you can be a part of the beta testing. Uh, and the other thing is we're really committed to sharing the findings of, of what we learned from this. Uh, the Knight Foundation is, has been a great contributor and supporter of ours. The main reason that they're involved, in addition to engaging communities, is they want to learn. Like, gamification of civic engagement, what works, what doesn't. Um, and we want to learn and we want to share that with all of you so you can not make the same mistakes that we're inevitably going to make through this process. So uh, just in closing, uh, we've launched this thing recently uh, where we're asking the audience to tell us what they really care about, what are the issues they're most passionate about, how do they uh, plan to use their power in this election cycle. And so I thought I'd just use a few of those to connect back to what we hope this game can do uh, we think and we hope that this game can be a new way to ask tough questions and hold candidates accountable. Uh, we think it can be a new way to ensure that candidates are articulating their vision for how they will create jobs for the future generation and, and how they're going to help achieve uh, affordable college education. And uh, we're also going to harness celebrity in the game. And you know, I think there's an opportunity to make sure that uh, we can protect Jay Wild's constitutional right to GTL uh, through the game. Uh, but you know, ultimately, big picture. We want to do this uh, and use this as a way to empower young voters. So uh, let's have a fantasy election. <laughs>